Well, welcome. Good morning. How are y'all doing this today? I'm like, I'm trying to mix up my words, you know. <laughs> All right. So, hey, we're so glad that you chose to join us this morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. So we're thankful that you chose to come and worship with us, whether you're in here or whether you join us online. We hope you have a desire to encounter God this morning. And I'm excited, as I always am, to have an opportunity to really worship the Lord and experience His presence. And I hope you, I hope you really engage God this morning in your worship. Just make it about you and Him this morning and enjoy His presence. Amen? One quick announcement for you this morning. Our young adults are going to be meeting tonight uh, right out here in the parking lot at 7 p.m. They're going to have a night just to kind of hang out and, and get together. So that's at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, and so if you have a young adult or if you're one of those or whatever, be here at 7 o'clock, all right? <laughs> so are you guys ready to worship this morning? Amen. Praise God. Why don't we stand together and let's worship God. <laughs> Father, we bless you. in this place.
Working in 
we just do that in our own words this morning? Just lift our hands to the Lord and just tell Him how much you love Him. Father God, we adore You. You are so worthy of our praise. You're so worthy of our adoration, Lord. You did everything, Father, so that we could know You and walk with You and have relationship with You. That we could come to You boldly, Father God. That we could know what it is like to be in Your presence and to experience You to know what it's like to have you in our life, dear Father God, pouring into us, dear Father God, each and every day. And when we gather together in, our, in your presence, Lord, when we come to your house, I believe we come to a house with an expectation, a, a, a father with an expectation of meeting with his children, to love on us and to, and to show us your, your mercy and your grace and to pour into our hearts this morning, Father God. And as we worship, Dear Father, we've lifted our voice and we've, we've, we've spoken of, of your greatness. We've spoken of how worthy you are. God, I pray, dear Lord, that we pour out our hearts to you this morning, God. That we've shown you in some way our, our, our love for you. And return to you, dear God, the love that you give to us so, so freely each and every day. God, I thank you, dear Lord, that there's no other place you'd rather be than right here with us as we worship you to surround your children with your, your loving arms, Father God, and just to help us to find refuge and peace and joy in your presence, God. God, I thank you for pouring that into our lives this morning. And God, I pray this morning as we dive into your word, God, that we, we do so not only with our, our physical ears open, dear Lord, but our spiritual ears open, open as well. That we hear your word, dear Father God, and then it, it, it becomes nourishment for our spirit this morning, God. Encouragement, wisdom, Father God, from your word. I pray, dear Lord, that you just have your way in us this morning. That this morning, through our time of worship, we set the table, Father God, so that we can be focused on you to receive what you have for us today. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Uh, we're going to continue in our acts of worship this morning through our opportunity to give of our tithes and our offering. And so I want to encourage you this morning, if you're here and you want to give a check or you want to give cash, there's some envelopes on the chairs around you. You can grab one of those. Uh, you can put your offering in there and just, and just deposit it in one of the offering boxes on the back walls. Um, also, you can go to our website at visitnewsong.com and you can click on the giving tab there and you can give through PayPal. You can give through our Give Plus app through the website, through the app itself on your phone, or text to give. However you like to give, we have made it a way for you to give. Amen? <laughs> so we've covered all the bases, all right? So if you would like to do that this morning as I pray, I just want to encourage you just to, like I said, continue in your act of worship um, and through our giving of our tithes and offering. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Father, that we have the opportunity to sow back into your kingdom, Father God, from the blessings that you give. Your scripture says all good things come from you, Father. And dear Lord, we truly are a blessed people. We are a blessed nation, Father God. No matter what the turmoil we may see, dear Father God, we still live in an incredible nation. And I pray this morning, as we continue in our act of worship, through our tithes and our offering, we just reaffirm the covenant, dear Lord, that you said to test you in. Dear God, you are faithful always. And God, we thank you for it, Lord. And so I pray this morning that you bless each and every giver this morning as they give. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Pastor CJ and Jen are out of town this weekend, hopefully getting some much-deserved rest that they, they should be getting. But so this morning, Pastor Ken's going to come and share God's word with you this morning. All right. Well, we appreciate Pastor CJ and Sister Jen uh, for their continued uh, blessing to Jesus first and foremost, and then also to us. So we are grateful that they're having uh, a few, few, few days of, of some downtime, and we just want to continue to lift them up in prayer uh, for for rest in their bodies and in their spirits today. So let's let's do that right now, would you? Just uh, just uh, let's lift their names up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our our leadership, our pastors that are here, uh, Pastor Jen and CJ. Uh, and their and their children, Father, we thank you that they uh, are first of all a servant to you, first and foremost in everything that they do, and because of that, they are also a blessing uh, to us as we get to follow and and partake with them in the ministry that you have given uh, to them. We ask that you give them rest. We ask to give them peace and uh, prosperity on their journey on this day where they are in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 
Again, it is great to be with you. This is a day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it. And uh, we're also grateful that this is a weekend that we acknowledge and, and, um, and celebrate the fact that, uh, of our independence uh, as, as a nation, as a, as a country. And so we um, are grateful, even, even with things as they are uh, today, whether regardless of what side of the fence you're on, what, whatever uh, political side, whatever, whatever that looks like for you socially or what have you, but we live in a great great nation and we are grateful that we can be uh, here in this place to continue to worship our Savior Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. We're, our main text today is going to be in John chapter 8 and verse 36. So if you have your Bibles with you, your apps, you can turn to those uh, at this time and uh, we'll be going to those here in just a few moments. But I want to read a few scriptures as we get in, I won't keep you long this morning, and but but have a f- have a few main points that we believe that we can live with freedom through Christ Jesus. Amen. Freedom through Christ Jesus. So, in in John eight it says, and this is I believe uh, starts in uh, chapter thirty. It says Jesus said to the people who who believed in him. So he was talking to believers. You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean? You will be set free. And Jesus replied and said, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is part of the family forever. We get to our key text. So, if the Son, and the Son is speaking, so if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. Amen. You are truly free. Did you know that out of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence, 52 of those were Orthodox Christians? deeply committed Christians, and the others all still believe in the Bible as the divine truth, the God of Scripture, and His personal intervention. The same group, it is the same Congress that formed the American Bible Society. Immediately after creating the Declaration of Independence, the Continental Congress of that time voted to purchase and import 20,000 copies of Scripture for the people of this nation. Patrick Henry, who is still remembered for his words, anybody can tell me, give me liberty or give me death. But not only did he say that, but in current textbooks, the context of those words has been left out. Here's what it actually said in in fullness. And I quote, an appeal to arms and the God of hosts is all that is left us. But we shall not fight our battle alone. There is a just God that presides over the destinies of nations. The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. The following year, 1776, he wrote this. It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionalists, but by Christians. Not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. For that reason alone, people of other faiths have been afforded freedom to worship here. So I give you, by form of video this morning, a abridged version of the Declaration of Independence of the 13 Colonies in Congress, July 4th, 1776. We 
we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal with certain unalienable rights. To secure these rights, governments are instituted, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Whenever any government becomes destructive, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government. The history of the present king is a history of repeated injuries. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of importance. He has obstructed the laws for the naturalization of foreigners. He has obstructed the administration of justice. He has made judges dependent on his will alone. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us, in times of peace, standing armies. He has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. For cutting off our trade with all parts of the world. For imposing taxes on us without our consent. For depriving us of the benefit of trial by jury. We, the representatives of the United States of America, do, by authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these United Colonies are free and independent states. And that they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other things which independent states do. And for the support of this declaration, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. We are grateful for a land that we've been able to be free this morning. As you well know, the most often quoted statement from the Declaration of Independence is this. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We hear that all the time. In our text, John 8, 36, it says, If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And what I'd like to draw a correlation this morning is the life, liberty, and happiness that were spoken of by Thomas Jefferson, one of our nation's founding fathers, are easily found in Jesus Christ. Even the founding fathers themselves fully understood that truth. And this morning we are going to examine just the next few moments how life, liberty, and happiness can all be obtained through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? So I've got three short, easy points this morning. One is this. Jesus gives life. Every breath that we have, our entire being, in the beginning, God created. The very breath of God that was put into us to give physical life. But more than that, he gives us eternal life. John 10.10, 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he said, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. He goes on to say, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And he did that on a cross over 2,000 years ago where he laid down his life for you and for me if we will accept him, if we will believe in him. So in contrast to the thief who takes life, Jesus gives life. The life that he gives right now is abundantly richer and fuller. It is, the, it is eternal. We can trust that. We can have hope in that. But even though it's eternal, yet it begins immediately if you will accept him. Life in Christ is lived on a higher plane because 
of his overflowing forgiveness, his love, and his guidance. So it simply comes down to a very simple question. Have you taken Christ's offer of life? Have you accepted him? Do you believe in him? His scripture says in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And he doesn't want us to perish because it goes on to say, And God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him would be saved. That is his hope. That is his want. It is a relationship with you. But as we sang this morning, surrender is the first step. To surrender. We have a free will. I've been told that there's certain types of of live animal traps. I've seen a few. I've not really uh, participated in a lot of trapping. But I understand that there's a certain animal trap that if the, as the animal goes in and he gets snared, if he would simply back up a little bit and surrender, the trap device would relax and he could technically escape. Because as, like if you can think of a, a, little, a little trap with a rope on it, as that tension is pulled and the, and the loop is tightened, and the more pressure that you put against and resist, the more that you resist, I'll say, the more that you resist, the tighter that becomes and the more enslaved you, you are. But if you just back up, sometimes that would just release and that they could escape. And this is the shape of mankind. If we would just let go of control of our lives, we would find freedom that we are pushing for. If you give up the rights, the responsibilities, and control of your life to Jesus Christ, you will find abundant life. So surrender is the first step. Sometimes it's a very difficult step to surrender. But it is the first step and the most important at that beginning. If we will surrender, confess with our mouth, believe with our heart, confess him, we can and will be saved, as his word tells us that we can trust. So number one, Jesus gives life. He gives life. Number two, liberty is also found in Jesus Christ. Life is found. Liberty is found. In Galatians 5 and verse 1 in the Amplified Version, it says, It was for freedom that Christ set us free, completely liberating us. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery, which you were once removed. Christ died to set us free from sin and from a long list of laws and regulations. Christ came to set us free, not free to do whatever we wanted because that would just lead us back to slavery, to our selfish desires. Rather, thanks to Christ, we are now free and able to do what was impossible before, and that's this, to live unselfishly. Those who appeal to freedom so they can have their own way or indulge in their own desires are falling back into sin. But we can be free and be liberated in Christ Jesus. Also, in turn, as believers, we do not want to put burdens of legalism back on Christians. Romans 8, 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. And 2 Corinthians 3, 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Through the Holy Spirit, God provides freedom from sin and condemnation. And when we trust Christ to save us, he removes our heavy burden of trying to please him and our guilt 
for failing to do so. He wants to remove the burden. He wants to remove the baggage from you. And it's not out of a matter of guilt or a matter, a matter of religious uh, uh, rules, but it's out of a relationship with Christ that we can have liberty and freedom. By trusting Christ, we are loved, accepted, forgiven, and freed to live for him. Again, by trusting Christ, we are loved, we are accepted, we are forgiven, and we are freed to live for him. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I heard the story from Dr. S. Lewis Johnson, a noted uh, New Testament scholar, that tells of a visit to Britain where he observed that British people love dogs as their pet. People have, have pets that sometimes you, you wonder if, they're, if, if they love them more than, you know, people. <laughs> Treat them as such. You know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. But during his stay, he noticed three kinds of dogs. And we're not talking about breeds here this morning. Three kinds of dogs which he relates to people in reference to freedom. The first are those who have law but no freedom. They are those who are on a chain. You've seen a dog on a chain or on a leash? As they're taking a walk or going down somewhere they're on on a chain they have law which is that chain but there's there's no freedom they they are simply go exactly where where they're told to go no no deviation they may jog they may roam with their masters yet they cannot go where they want to go they are have the law but no freedom the second are those dogs who have freedom but no law. These kind of dogs are not on a chain, and they're free to just come and go and, and, and wander wherever they want to go. But yet that sometimes they're living in a very dangerous existence because there's no boundary, there's no, there's no connection to their master at all. They're just free to go. They may get in the road. They may get run over. They, you, you, never, you never know. They live in a very dangerous existence. And the third are those dogs that have the law of freedom. The law of freedom. We didn't say law but no freedom. We say the law of freedom. They are the kind of dogs who jog, they roam, and they play with their masters without a chain. So they're st still there in relationship with their master, but they're not held to, to a specific chain they're free to go wherever they want to go but they still return to their masters this they do because of the chain of affection the chain of affection that connects them to their masters the first are like those legalists who painstakingly live in, a, in, a, in obedience to man made rules to the suppression of their freedom those are the ones that have the law but no freedom. The second are like those people who make use of their freedom as a license to sin and to do just anything and everything that they want to do, but they live very dangerously when they do that. And the third, the third one of those are like genuine believers who make use of their freedom in Christ to stay close in relationship with the Master the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that's where he wants us today, is not to live in a religious aspect, but one of a chain of love and affection for him. Therefore, we walk in freedom with no, no chain, still with a free will, but to do and move as he 
would have us to move and to do. So Christ gives us life. Number two, liberty is also found in Jesus Christ. And lastly, happiness is found in Jesus Christ. Psalms 144, 15, it says, uh, in these, these three scriptures I'm about to read are in the Amplified Version, it says, how blessed and favored are the people in such circumstance. How blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored are the people whose God is the Lord. How blessed and favored are you if God is your Lord? Proverbs 16, 20, it says, he who pays attention to the word of God will find good and blessed. He who pays attention to the word of God will find good and blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired. It's he who trusts in the Lord. In Proverbs fourteen twenty one, it says, he who despises his neighbor's sin against God and his fellow man, but happy, blessed and favored by God is he who is gracious and merciful to the poor. Heard the story of missionary William Nibb sailed for Jamaica in November 1824. He traveled to replace his missionary brother Thomas who had passed away just a few months before his departure from England. His brother had a school in Jamaica dedicated to the children of slaves. And that school was prospering. Slaves flocked from the sugarcane fields every night to hear him teach. Sunday morning services were packed. The churches in Jamaica grew like wildfire under his guidance. But success of that also brought persecution. The slaves were soon forbidden from attending evening services. One of the church's deacons, which was also, also a slave, was flogged and ordered to work in chains by order of the magistrates for holding prayer meetings. Even with all of that, still the slaves openly sang hymns and prayed for one another. The colonial legislature even attempted to forbid the building of new chapels for the slaves. Finally, this missionary, Nib, and other missionaries were arrested. The chapels they built were destroyed by angry mobs with many of the mobs incredibly led by those magistrates themselves. The sugarcane planters were furious at Nibs and those others. For imagine the effect on the soul of a now literate slave as he or she read these words in Galatians 4, 7. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And so you, since you are a son, God has also made you an heir. Don't you think that caused a little bit of friction as they begin to learn this and know this? These Jamaican believers understood the depth of the words, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it was very alive and real to them. They had tasted a depth of freedom in their spirit from Jesus Christ that would cause them to hunger even more for freedom from physical slavery. Missionary William Nebb sailed back to England and his testimony alone swept away any hesitation from the churches of England from supporting abolition of the slaves in Jamaica. The churches began to line up behind that cause of abolition. Finally, on August 1st, 1838, complete freedom was granted throughout the British West Indies. Back in Jamaica, on July 31st, 1838, Nib led a late-night worship service packed with over 10,000 men and women who sang praises to Jesus Christ until at the stroke of midnight when they were literally freed from the bonds of slavery. How powerful is that? The gospel of Jesus Christ woke these people to freedom, and it was to Jesus Christ that they gave credit for their truly being free. The next day, a children's Celebration 
continued. And here's what, how it went out. It was a, the burial of a casket containing a slave collar, a whip, and a chain. Freedom had come at last to Jamaica. There was now not a soul, not one person in the West Indies that was truly a slave. A slave. But the further out away from the other uh, more populated areas, in these remote areas, were those who did not hear the news. There were those who had no idea that they were now free. Former slave masters kept the slaves in the dark, and free people continued to work as slaves for months after this emancipation proclamation. Can you imagine that? They were free. But in their ignorance, they remained a slave. We too were enslaved once. We too were held down by the bonds of sin. And yes, we too, like those freed in the West Indies, can remain in slavery on account of our ignorance. We are no longer slaves. We are now, in fact, sons entitled to the full rights of an heir. Well, then, when Paul encourages us this morning, he says, let us set aside our ignorance. Let us set aside our slavery and live as free people. Our country has much to offer, but God has so much more to offer. To pursue life, to pursue liberty, to pursue happiness is to pursue God. Last, last Sunday as a uh, pastor was, was preaching, I feel like that God just kind of downloaded this acrostic. I believe that's what that's called. We all want to be free. It's within us. We want to be free. And we've kind of detailed out how that can be this morning. But if we will pursue Jesus Christ on this day, we can be free. And here's what I believe he said. If we connect with him, our feelings give way to faith. Our feelings give way to faith. The rituals give way to relationship. Our emptiness gives way to expressiveness. And our end, which is death, gives way to eternity. So as we commit our lives to Christ, our feelings give way to faith, rituals give way to relationship, emptiness gives way to expressiveness, and our end becomes an eternity with Jesus Christ. So I pray that today you will come and find the liberty, the life, and the happiness that is only found in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. So whether you're in this room or watching via some online method, Jesus Christ loves you. Our Father in heaven sent his Son that we could have life eternal. And not only life eternal, but have an abundant life. So I ask that you ask yourself this question. What is the Holy Spirit saying to me? today is he saying come to me all you that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest if you will just submit to me as your Lord and Savior I will give you the life the liberty and the happiness 
that you so crave and that you so desire? If that's you, you can simply do it by accepting him. His word says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you will be saved. You can do it right now, wherever you are. Or maybe you're saying, maybe the Holy Spirit is saying to you, I'm a believer, but I have kind of slid back to a point that I'm starting to feel some of the bondage. Maybe, I'm, maybe I don't, don't feel the full liberty in Jesus Christ. This liberty that you speak of. But his word, let me remind you, says, For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus. So as we sang this morning, surrender to him afresh and anew. In your own way, wherever you are, say something to effect of heavenly Father, we magnify you, we bless you. We thank you for your son Jesus who has provided freedom. We thank you that you have provided a, a life of liberty, a life of happiness. Not just what we consider happiness of, of, in this world, but a true joy and a true peace that only comes not from things, not from uh, a place to live, not any of those kind of things, but to simply be in relationship with you. Father, let the joy that you give be our strength on this day. We thank you that we can be in a place that we can continue to lift your name and to worship you. We pray for our country. We lift it up. We repent. And we turn today. Let us do that in our own lives each and every day, Father, as you give us strength and give us the ability. And those, as we now have knowledge of your word, let us make, have boldness to step out into our sphere of influence and to make sure that those who don't know that they can be free, even though you sent your son Jesus to allow them to be free, let us share your word boldly. In your precious son's name, Jesus, everyone said, amen. Again, we are blessed that you are here. We are grateful that you're in the house of God today. I ask that you continue, continue to uh, lift up your pastors uh, as you go through the rest of this weekend. And uh, we just want to bless you. May, may you go with God this morning. We're going to dismiss you. If, if you'd like to visit, please do so out on the, uh, on the patio area. And uh, it's great to see you. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless.